Hello and welcome back to Present to Connect. My name's Mark O'Mara and I'm an English teacher and I'm presenting this mainly for my students but for other people who are interested. If you haven't watched the introduction and the section about designing the content of your talk, I strongly encourage you to go back and watch that before you do this. But this stage is about how you make the actual slide pack that it is that you're going to use and this is what I call the construct stage. This is where you break out the machinery and in this day and age that means, you know, a computer or an iPad or you know, something that can produce a slide pack. There's plenty of ways to do it. Which is actually one of the next points that I want to make. I don't much care whether you use PowerPoint, Keynote, uh, the slide pack maker on Google Docs, or I think it's called Google Drive at the moment. Um, there's Apple Keynote. There's a whole raft of things. Um, there's Prezi. They're all really good. All of them require you, though, to be really careful to produce the presentation that you want to do. None of them will force you into producing a good presentation. This is something that your brain needs to do, and that's what this stage is about. There you go. I tried to stop talking so that I could give you a moment to read that quote. I guess the point here is you don't have to put every single idea that you have into your presentation. In fact, it's better if you don't. Just put the important stuff in. So don't, don't put in every image that you like. Don't put in every idea that you like. You've got your three big ideas and your central message from back in the design stage. Just go with them. Keep the text that you put on the screen as simple as possible. Even this poster that I've put here is too complicated for a presentation. It's fine for what it is, which is a, you know, a thing out the front of shops to sell um, newspapers and getting people to get their free pint of beer. But given that you're up there and you're looking at people and you're talking to them, you do not need that much text. I've put just one word there, simple. I'm telling you everything else that you need to know. You know from experience and I know from experience that if you put a whole lot of text up on the screen, people are going to read it. And when they're reading it, they're not paying attention to you. And also, importantly, what a lot of people fall into the trap of doing, and I've done this, is you have sentences on the screen and you turn around and read them. It is like reading to people and I bet that most of your audience can read. If you want them to read, give them a piece of paper with it on it. Don't put stuff on the board and read it out to them. They can read. Talk to them. Make that human connection. Simple text on the screen. If you need to give them a lot of information, if you need to give them detailed information, if they need you know, the last 25 years of sales figures or detailed anything, either put it on paper or give them a website at the end or give them some kind of electronic document where they can go through the detail. Up on the big screen is not the time to go through 350 data points. It's not even the place to go, the time to go through 10 data points all at once. If you need to, break it down year by year and compare each year if that's what you're doing. But don't deal with large sets of data on a screen. People will either not understand it or B, they'll be looking at the screen and not paying attention to you. It's a dreadful idea. Stay away from it. If you are going to use graphs in your presentation, don't necessarily use the graphs that came in whatever your source material is. A lot of these graphs will have heaps and heaps of information in them and you will overwhelm and confuse, confuse your audience. Keep it nice and simple, they should be able to recognise it. I'm not saying dumb it down, I'm saying just boil it down to its essential elements. What do you need to tell the story? So in this one, as we can see, as simplicity goes up, impact goes up. Keep your graph nice and simple, even if you have to draw it yourself. There's plenty of software that can help you get a professional looking graph, but boil it down to its essence. Again, I'm not saying dumb, I'm saying simple. Just boil it down to the message. Use the best quality images that you can find. This is one of, I think, the great successes of George Lucas' Star Wars um, series of movies. I was going to say trilogy, but it's been a long time since it was a trilogy. In that you went in there and there are icons that stuck in your mind. Not just one, you had this particular robot, and I bet you all know who he is. You have Darth Vader, who even though he was the bad guy, he was iconic. He was a high quality image, and people just get it. You know, from birth, we recognize images. Admittedly, not at this definition, but we recognize images. We have to learn to read but we recognize images, so use high quality images. That's really important because people will get the meaning pretty much instantaneously and they can still listen to you. This slide, well this slide isn't too much of an exaggeration. This is what a certain number of people have. They have, you know, 
the lines of text, they have the grainy image of something, which is probably R2-D2. Well, I mean, it is, but it's, it's grainy. And in fact, it's so grainy that it's like, man, that is distracting that it's so grainy. So give that a miss. Don't do that. Do this instead. That is iconic and recognisable and actually looks quite professional. And that, I don't know, just looks, at, at best it looks every day. At worst, it looks like you don't, you're not serious about what it is that you're doing. I reckon go big with your images. If you can, fill the whole screen with them. Have a big image. Use every pixel on there. You're not paying for colour ink here. You're just projecting it on a screen. Don't put a border around it. I think borders are you know, a thing of the past from you know, a necessity of the way we used to hang pictures. If you can't go big, if your image just will not scale to that size for various reasons, I think going small is a good idea because then it kind of looks like a found object and all that white space draws your eye towards the image. Okay, that's the basics of how I think you should go about putting your presentation together, the rules that you should keep in mind. I have another little um, video that goes with this which particularly talks about how to, um, how to place your images on the screen and some details about that. So when you're putting together your presentation, I encourage you to have a look at that also. And of course, all of this information is on the Present to Connect website.